Hi everybody, it's Aria Warren, registered dietitian, type 1 diabetic, and also certified diabetes educator. And today I want to talk to you about five factors that really affect insulin absorption. I actually have 10 factors written out on my blog, so if you want the whole list, you can visit my blog with the link below. I'm also, as an educator, I work with people with type 1, so if you need help with your diabetes, let me know. I am here for you. So insulin absorption, good insulin absorption, it's kind of the unspoken foundation of good control. Because if you think about it, even if you have perfect settings, whatever that is, uh, you know, perfect amount of dosing for your bolusing, you have the perfect correction factor, the perfect adjusted basils, let's say you eat the perfect amount of macronutrients, your carbs, proteins, fats, you're eating in a timely manner, you're watching your portion sizes, you're doing great exercise with aerobic and anaerobic and you are staying consistent but if you don't have good insulin absorption then you're going to get lackluster blood sugar results at best and that can be really frustrating because you feel like you're putting so much effort in but you can't get the blood sugar to be where you want it to be and a couple ways you notice this if you're having to change your site if you're using a pump if you're having to change it more than every three days also if you unless you're taking a large amount of insulin, just running out of insulin, then you might need to change it before the day three. But so if you're having to change frequently because your blood sugar just isn't really moving, it just doesn't seem like it, the insulin's working. Um, also, if you've noticed that um, your correction factor seems to work really well some days, but not other days. Uh, and you also, if you see that your blood sugar is just dropping really dramatically after it didn't seem to be moving for a long time. These are just a couple of signs that you're having poor absorption. And so I wanna go over the top five that could be really annoying and frustrating, but maybe this can help you with your management. So first, I would say to figure out if you're using the right injection site for you. And so I was on the Medtronic pump for over a decade. I used the quick set, and then I also used the Silhouette. I kind of went in between the two. And then I switched to the tandem pump and I used the AutoSoft, which was supposed to be the usual infusion set that everybody uses. I used it for a while, so it's supposed to be similar to the quick set. I just, at the end of my days on tandem, I was having to change my site almost every day and I thought, what is going on? I'm just burning through my site. And so then I went off of the pump because I thought, I think I just have a lot of buildup. I've been on the pump for a long time, I must have a lot of lipohydrate atrophy which is just the buildup of scar tissue and so I felt like that's probably why I'm not getting my good absorption but so I was supposed to be I was planning on just being on a pump break for about two weeks I was using Tristiba and Fias but then that extended longer and longer because I thought wow this is really predictable I know that my insulin's going to work the way that I've dosed for so I kept with it and I actually was off of a pump for nine months and then I got introduced to looping, and so I, I started on Omnipod, but then I went back to Tandem to try the control IQ, but I knew I, was, I had to try things differently because that, the Autosoft XC infusion set wasn't working for me. So then I tried the True Steel infusion set, and I had such a dramatic difference in my infusion set and my predictability with my insulin. So now I just know, okay, if I am going to use a tubed pump, I know that the steel ones will work better for me. But every person is different and you need to first identify if you aren't getting good absorption, if you're having to check, change out your site more frequently than every three days. And then look at your, you know, if you're a leaner person, then you could benefit from a true steel or if you're just, if you move around a lot. And so work with your provider, work with your educator. You can reach out to me and we can figure out what infusion set works best for you. But that I feel that that is not stressed enough how important it is to have a good infusion set. Before we get into the other ones, actually, I want to talk about something called subcutaneous blood flow, so SBF. And what that is, is when you have better blood flow in an area, blood is the vehicle for insulin to disperse throughout your body, get the glucose, take the glucose into the cells, and so if you don't have good blood flow, then you are going to decrease absorption. So if we have poor blood flow or subcutaneous blood flow, so subcutaneous is meaning that fat layer right below your skin is the subcutaneous fat. So we'll just say, we'll stick with blood flow for, to keep it simple. So if you have poor blood flow, then it's gonna decrease absorption. So that's why you wanna look at where you're putting your injections. 
So some of the most consistent areas to put an injection or a pump site would be stomach, arm, you try flank, then it gets kind of tricky, but some people have been able to get away with their thighs, but then your buttocks is your dead last. So your thighs and buttocks area are lower in the SBF, the subcutaneous blood flow, and you're going to have better blood flow in your stomach and in the back of your arms. It's better where you have where you're a little bit leaner or you have better blood flows, and that's going to allow that insulin to move more quickly. Which leads us to our third feature, which is exercise. And exercise can increase blood flow because you're getting that blood flow to move more quickly. So exercise, along with just increasing blood flow, depending on the type of exercise, if it's cardio-based, so you think of steady state cardio, so that's jogging, walking, swimming, after about 15 minutes, that's gonna cause your blood sugar to decrease. But if you do more intensity, so higher intensity HIIT training, that can actually cause a spike in blood sugar. Even though you're moving the blood, it's just when your body's under stress, then you have hormones that can cause insulin resistance and also your liver can release glucose to give your body more energy. And so the, that's kind of a double whammy, which can cause an increase in blood sugar. But just normal cardio-based activity allow your body to burn up that glucose and it can also increase the speed at which your body is using your insulin so that's why exercise just doing some cardio can help the insulin spread around your body faster it burns up that glucose and it allows your blood sugar to decrease at a faster rate my next point i want to talk about is lipohypertrophy so we talked about this a little bit but what that is is when we use the same site or area repeatedly then actually insulin can cause a buildup of fat in that place and over time it can even harden and become unsightly or painful and if you keep injecting in these areas then that can cause for unpredictable blood sugar because of the poor absorption of the insulin and so what i would say is make sure that you are rotating from side to side every time you're doing a pump change and if you are using a pump, make sure to switch it out every three days. If you go longer than that, even if it's working well, then you have a higher chance of having that lipohypertrophy. So you just want to be extra careful about rotating and make sure that you change out your side every three days. Also, if you do have some swelling and lumpiness that you can see or feel, then make sure you avoid that area. The recommendation is to wait two to three months, but depending on how severe it is, you may actually need to wait longer. So, and if you feel that you just have lipohypertrophy everywhere, then you can consider a pump break. Just make sure that you work with an educator so that you still can remain good control uh, using MDIs, multiple daily injections, rather than using your pump. Okay. So our last factor is one that is not talked about often, but it's actually the size of your insulin dose. If you take a large dose of insulin, that's going to be a lot of insulin to diffuse in a small area of blood flow, and so it's not going to be able to disperse as easily. So there's a couple things that you can do. So first off, if you're taking injections, you could actually take half of your, in your dose on one, one arm and the other half on the other arm. Or if you're using a pump, you could just split up your doses instead of doing everything all at once. You could do it later on. So what I do, which also helps me have more of an intuitive eating approach, is that I will do a pre-bolus before my meal, and that helps me to hit my target blood sugar before introducing food. And in that pre-bolus, I also include the amount of carbohydrates I'm going to eat. And depending on the type of insulin, so maybe use VF, which is supposed to work a little bit more quickly. I do use VF. I can't see a ginormous difference between Novolog and VF, but I do see a difference that it works a little bit faster. But I will do that pre-bolus to get my blood sugar where I want it to be, and then also bolusing for the amount of carbs I eat. And then as I, if I decide to eat more carbohydrates, then I will do another bolus the moment I know I'm about to eat more carbohydrates. And so this can work out where I'm actually taking three or four or even five boluses in a single meal. And if you're taking injections, that's a lot of shots. You don't want to do five shots. Even if you are just splitting it up to two shots rather than one large shot, then that can help your body better absorb it. Okay, so those are my five factors. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you have learned something new and this has been beneficial, subscribe. I'm happy to produce content for you. Hopefully make diabetes a little bit easier. You can get the rest of the factors on my blog. And if you need help with your diabetes, I'm here. I understand what you're going through. And
Okay, well, hopefully you're having a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye.